yeah so i had a poker coaching for an hour and then i have one and a half more hours at 2 p.m and then i might have two more hours at 4 p.m so if you're wondering how hard i'm working on my game that's pretty hard because i'm doing it in the middle of other stuff dang lex needs poker coaching yeah i get lots i see no i don't know everything there's a lot to learn there's a lot to learn. I, I talked about this the other day, right? Um, or yesterday, even. So, like... Uh, if... This is the poker spectrum. So, this is the worst player in the world. This is the best player in the world, right? Uh, like I said yesterday, the, this box... Oh. This here would be winning players and then you know if we zoom in on this so the, like the, let's let's the, let's say this doesn't matter right because like if you look at a poker spectrum i'm in the top one percentile or something i'm over here so this is where i am but and let's say let's say that that this this part is like low stakes players winning players but low to mid stakes players right like this here so what I'm really focusing on is this part. And if I would zoom that out and make that bigger, now all of a sudden my spectrum is pretty big. If this is uh, if this is the best player in the world here, then I would say like, I'm somewhere here. It's hard to say. It's hard to say, but let's say I'm somewhere here. Somewhere here. Now I'm getting coached by the best players in the world to move myself over there so i don't know everything even the people that are here don't know everything because they figure out new stuff like somebody will go dive really deep into a situation and find out a new really good overall strategy for bounty builders uh, which makes him go over here and then everybody over here that doesn't do work falls behind and that's why people uh that's why people um fall behind uh in poker in general like if if this is the group of winning players um and you are and you're here and you don't work on your game but then the people that are over here that you're beating every day let's say they're working on their game a lot this happens all the time right and this is why it's so impressive that a guy like Galfond can still compete against the best in plo for instance because what happens is people people get uh, uh, people get complacent, right? People get complacent, but these guys there's always hungry people, and they move the line over here. Now this becomes the new standard. So this becomes the new best player in the world, right? But if you don't work on your game, you're still here. You don't move along with it. Now all of a sudden you're sub top, right? And this is what happens with, when not working on their game. So the, the best players in the world that aren't working on their game are going to fall and drop here. And they're always going to stay somewhere in this vicinity, right? Like it's it's always it's always going to be... Uh, it's always... They're always going to be somewhere here. Because they're super tough to play. But, you know, they're just catching up to do. Like you see this all the time. You see this all the time. I mean, you're not like... You're always going to crush people that, that... I think that no matter what, you'll always be able to win at like 1-2 or something. So you'll always be here. But there's lots of people getting better than you. Because also like when you when you don't work on your game, you still progress, right? A little bit. Like you still progress a little bit um, because uh, you're playing against people. So even though you're not working on it, you still notice stuff that's good. Like the people that move the line over here... The people that move the line over here... Uh, might be uh, uh, might be the best in the world, but if you play against them without studying, you're still going to pick up stuff that makes your line go right. But it's kind of like it goes like this, right? It's it's like you're both mo you're, you're both moving forward, like you're over here, you're both moving forward, but he's like gaining a lead. So this is why I study because I get coaching. I get coaching from the people that move this line, and I'm moving with it. And I'm I'm like I'm in I'm in catch up mode, so I'm uh like I'm I'm def I'm I'm go I'm going this way. So I'm in catch up mode, so it's important. It's important. 
what is a typical coaching session like there's a few things um so okay so i have okay i'll explain it because it's it's it is interesting i guess uh typical coaching session uh me and the wes okay so this is one of my coaches pretty nice pretty nice fucking graph i would say so this is the Wes. Um, uh, he, he offers coaching two ways. The Wes watches my stream, takes a screenshot. Uh, while I'm streaming, he does like uh, he'll he'll tell me, hey, uh, so on your stream five minutes ago, you said this and this about this concept. Um, watch out for X Y Z. Or he'll show me. Let me show you. Let me show me screenshots. Okay. So I'm streaming. This is, I've never showed this, right? So I'm streaming and he sends me this. He's like, okay, you had Jax. Uh, you had Jax. I can't think with music on for some reason. Uh, we had Jax. Uh, it's Jack 10 9. I bet the flop. He says, uh, we check a lot of under pairs here and also ace king and ace queen. So this board is really good to check all top set. The button has all the nut straights in his range. Uh, we're almost never going to get three streets of value. So you can't go bet, bet, bet. Uh, the board will mutate very often, right? Like a fucking eight of eight or a heart might kill the action or make us lose. Um, it's uh, very similar to a PLO spot because the board is dynamic. So it's very good here to check call for range protection for when we do check. So he's just like, he hears me say it. I'm like, or actually, I didn't even say anything about this board. This is yesterday. Yesterday, I think. And I just bet this board. And he has a stream open and uh, I hired him to kind of like while he's grinding uh, have my stream open and then during the stream he's going to pick up on stuff that I uh, that he thinks I do wrong or concepts that I say out loud. Now, this is an example of something that I just do where he tells me I shouldn't do. So I immediately learn. He picks up on something that I do live play, right? Well, on a delay, obviously, because he's not live coaching me. So he watches the stream, which is on a delay. After the hand is over, he gives me advice. Um, so then... Um, he also hears me talks about, talk about concepts. He notes the concepts that I explain in a wrong manner. He goes into study programs, finds screenshots, and then uh, tells me about uh, it in a coaching session, which we do every Friday. So from uh, his coaching, I get him watching the stream, highlighting mistakes that I'm making. Uh, from those mistakes that I'm making, uh, targeting bigger concepts and doing studying about it. Now, that's the West's part. Then I also have W3C Ray, who is uh, the mathematician behind the Razor Edge material. So he is the mathematician behind all that stuff. Um, so when Ben CB, for instance, uh, uh, goes into uh, the tank about certain stuff, he's the guy that uh, supplies most of the, the the calculating work and all the the, the kind of like you know the numbers and shit and. Um, He's the one who made the, the Bounty Beast course, for instance. So he's insanely good with numbers. So what I do with him, I give him every single hand history I played. He puts it in databases and he just analyzes my database. Um, he works together a lot with uh, um, top regulars. I mean, he does coaching with lots of top regulars. I don't want I don't want to name any names, but, you know, the best of the best. And they also get coaching from him and they talk through spots and whatever. And he's an insane player himself, obviously. So um, he looks at my database. Then he l tries to target weak points. Like where, where are my numbers? Like how much am I check raising certain flops? Oh, you're doing, you're doing that a lot less than what I see good regulars do or what I do, right? So he looks for like, what are the stats from top regulars? And then he compares them to my stats and then he says, okay, it seems like you don't check raise enough flops. So then he has my whole database of hands because I send him every month or every week. I send him all my hands in that whole database. He goes into detail um, and then he searches for all the hands where I could have check raised the flop. And then he goes and picks the interesting ones. And then we do a coaching session going about the, the 10 most important misses. And then we build a new strategy around that. And he gives me like change it this way. So the sixth thing about this about this coaching is um, that they're checking my live thought process, which is what the West is doing. He's seeing my play live in action, uh, fixing that. So that's like lots of small spot fixes, lots of bigger concepts. And then we go like super deep in really specific spots where what is the worst part about my game? 
that is what W3C Ray kind of does. So W3C Ray tackles what is the worst part about my game and uh, goes into that mode to fix those. So um, back to paint. Wait, let me catch up to chat because I like talking about this on another lay. Do you ever disagree with your coach when they correct you? Um, no, but I will say if I had a very specific read, like I will say sometimes because it's important, right? If they say, for instance, oh, you have to check these flops and I go, I know that. But in this case, I bet because the guy did X, Y, Z and then they're like, okay, so that's an exploitative, right? That is like, what did you do in a situation in a vacuum that was best? It's important for me to say that because otherwise I start preparing this whole coaching session about a spot that I'm quite good at, but they just saw one instance where I deviated from optimal strategy, right? But like, the, pretty much the way what we're doing is if you, uh, if like, let's say this is uh, whatever, right? It's like quality, quality of play. Let's say this is my entire game. This is my entire game, right? And it's uh, it's built out of all these small blocks. All these small sections. Right? You get the point, right? All these small sections. Now, what's happening is by doing the database analysis and hearing me talk about my game, they're constantly picking at what's the worst part of my game. When I hear what's the worst part of my game and we do a deep dive into what's optimal compared to top regulars, compared to what uh, poker study program tools say, mathematics, right? Like everything. We dive so deep into it and we hammer down on the strategy. What usually happens is that um, this part, that this part moves over here because when we dive into something we go to like the most current strategy the ones that top regulars are studying information that comes straight from them and they say this is how you play that spot and this is how you do it so very often that goes there or at least here or something right so i upgraded something and put it all the way over there so i got a lot better all of a sudden right so then if we do that again if we do that again now, what's the next part? So this could be like, oh, uh, you know, three betting, uh, calling three bets out of position. Cool. So that's this part, right? So then the next part, this part is three betting out of position. Cool. Study it. Put it over there. Very up to date on the spot. It's really fresh in my memory. Very fucking cool. Okay. So we fixed that. Okay, cool. So what's the next bet? What's the next worst part? Ah. Uh, playing against open raises from the small blinds. Cool. Studied it. Put it over there. Okay, cool. Done. You know? And then we and then we do this. You see what's happening to my game? The quality of my game... The quality of my game is going that way. It's like, this part is just moving. It starts here and it's just moving like this. This is my game. If you look on a, on a, a relative quality scale. So that's what the studying is doing. And that's why I'm improving so fast. It's because we're constantly attacking the worst part of my game and making it solid or good. So like, for instance, one, you know, a few big ones was certain board textures for C-betting. That was a big fix. Uh, another one was multi-way spots. What multi-way textures to bet? What's the bet sizing? What do we check raise? What's our big line play? Uh, you know, all that stuff. So that's big. We're pretty much constantly hopping our game forward. Are you going to be streaming any coaching sessions? Okay, so I used to stream coaching sessions uh, a bit more often. For instance, when I was, uh, I'd had a few with Ben CB. Now, the biggest problem is, what if I hear about the worst part of my game? What if I hear about the worst part of my game, but I'm not making adjustments well enough to get it over there, right? What if I, if I, what if I only get it over here? Then it's still one of the worst parts of my game. But I'm broadcasting, any single person in chat that plays against me can just make a note on PokerStars and says uh, Lex probably still struggles a bit on Ace-Ace-5 boards or on pair-pair uh, X boards where pairs are between 5s and 10s versus big blinds. Like what if they see me make a mistake there or something on stream and then they can assume, oh, he still has a leak. So when I do general concept coaching, like, oh, hey, 
let's look today let's look today at um blind fee blind blind fee blind play in general that part might be here and i might learn like new interesting shit but it might be here or it might be here and i'm just hearing some other stuff that might push it over here right so that's like general spot coaching that is interesting but if we're talking about this part this is the worst about my game where the biggest holes are where the people can exploit me the most if a regular is making money against me it's in these situations right this part this part this part this is where they're attacking me i can't start broadcasting that part of my game that's why i can't broadcast those coaching sessions on top of that my coaches are asking me if they're giving me information where any one of these parts can go over here right think think back about that the model that i said like the best players are doing stuff all the way over there they sometimes spend 30 to 40 hours calculating a situation or a situation in poker that makes them one of the best in the world at it if they're going to give me coaching for uh an hourly and i'm going to broadcast it to 3,000 people they should be charging me like 10 times the amount because i'm pretty much broadcasting their work to people that didn't either calculate it didn't get acquired from coaching you see so the coaching sessions that I do are that are specific where it's like, okay, so I mean, you're talking about stuff that top 20 regulars do, right? Like top 20 people in the world that have just found out, out about it are uh, handling this spot now and doing it a certain way. And I'm going to stream it to three, four thousand people. Like the moment I do that, they're just going to say, okay, then the coaching is not worth it for me. I'm not going to do it. So I cannot get the coaching that I need to improve the most if I'm going to stream it. Now, a different, a different thing would be is I could um do coaching sessions where i say hey, let's do general spots that's definitely a possibility but to be really honest with you the fact of the matter is right now i'm improving so much and it's going so efficiently that i don't really want to fuck with a working system and i'm pretty i'm like when it comes down to it i'm just enjoying it too much like i'm just enjoying my progression too much i love learning the new stuff i love applying it so you guys still reap the rewards from it because you uh you get to see me play the strategies out or at least try to and talk about it like some concepts i won't like there's some stuff where the coaches say you simply have to promise me that you're not going to explain why you do this on stream and that's fine that's fair enough right um I, I there's there's ways i will always talk about it where it's valuable to you guys without saying pinpointing like this is the exact thing of why this is good and you can exploit it like this like you that that's just that's just you know part of the deal and whatever it's very understandable and trust me the like the the best players that are streaming like bbz and ape styles and stuff they do that too right they're not gonna say i have to do this because this is the exploit they don't do that right everybody that streams doesn't give away like the top 10 percent of what they're trying to do for you know however good they are and the better people get the bigger that percentage is but it's, it's like simply the simple answer is i just can't start broadcasting my biggest mistakes like what if what if um Like imagine a CSGO uh, streamer, right? Let's say Fallen for Team Liquid. Fallen is on Liquid and uh, he now gets like 30, 40,000 viewers sometimes and streaming is going really well. And it would be pretty much asking him like, hey, can you broadcast the team meetings? Like the strategy, you know, the, the war room kind of meetings, like where they say our rotations are bad here. This is where we're vulnerable. We cannot do this. Like anybody who plays them can just look it up and make notes and, you know, in their case, they play against like maybe what 16 pro teams or something that could do it and would do it and exploit it. But there's hundreds of people in my chat that I play against semi regularly. Like there's hundreds of regulars that have my stream open and play against me that don't chat that I don't know about, or top regulars that instantly know how to crush me in a 5k. Imagine somebody playing a 5k or 10k against me and they know exactly how to fucking stomp me because of I did a because I did a coaching session live on stream and they're just like, oh okay. Cool. so he doesn't know how to approach that spot then i know exactly how to fucking punish him you see that that's really what happens so what do you think about learning with masterclass i was looking at masterclass in the ground new. i like to have your opinion about that i mean it's like 90 bucks you're gonna learn a lot of really useful stuff that's about about poker and approach to poker and there's for 95 percent of twitch chat that money is worth it even if it's just like a motivational drive there's like a guy like a negrano has so much experience you're gonna learn something from it 
are you gonna learn the hardcore like big blinds versus fucking uh, early position lead spots and turn play no of course not but that's the next step right it's yeah 100 percent you can uh, you can learn about that plus it's fun to watch stuff like that and it's always inspiring to hear somebody who got to the top of their field uh give you tips and shit so yeah much respect for these guys i hope one day i have the time to dedicate myself to this kind of stuff yeah it's tough i mean like i'll be honest like most regulars are too lazy to do it the best of the best is a combination of talent but also a lot of hard work just a lot of hard work so that's uh, that's what people sometimes forget about or at least uh, you know people don't always realize that even uh even tons of uh tons of really really good players don't uh make the effort yeah to take a look at your game from a totally unbiased pov just to just want to help you get past on something you're stuck on or took badly in a tournament i think i'm starting to see the advantage of a coach i just the the thing is though like i'm spending a lot of money on coaching like a lot like um last year i spent uh, I think around forty thousand dollars on coaching. I kid you not. Um, this year, I think will be more. So, one of the reasons why I can do that is because I feel that it's an investment in my stream. Also, like it's investment in my poker, right? Like I'm making more money now. I have a lot more big scores. Like, and you know, since I started coaching, I've had 70, 70 70k, seventy k, ninety six k. Uh, second 97k win like of course this is there's also variance i understand all that but my results are getting better and we're also just checking my win rate and it's just multiplying so you know i'm getting money back um but if i wasn't streaming then i would have to do a lot of this groundwork myself and just study that way but you know because if if i get better my stream gets more interesting if i make more deep runs i'll have more viewers so it's also just an investment in my stream also i can do uh because i have a company around my stream right i just have uh function as a company that sends invoices and shit and that's where i get like salary paid from sponsors and stuff um so uh like coaching is a tax write-off for me so that makes it better as well which means i'll like get f because it's an investment in the company so i'll get like 40 percent back um as a tax uh, write-off so you know if i spend forty thousand on coaching and uh i get fifteen thousand back then it's like okay so now i pay twenty five thousand, and then you get already get dangerously close to it just being simply worth it but then with the stream on top it's like just fucking printing and poker you can target really specific areas yeah but it's like this is just kind of like um you you could do this even if you want to get better at tennis right or fitness or something or like what is the worst what is the worst part about my game like what do oh like my you know my approach when i want to uh move to the net or my second serve or um whatever tiebreakers like there's always there's always a worst part and whenever you approve it there's a new worst part right how much do you think the field improves over time how much do you have to improve to stand still how much do you have to improve to stand still um like i think right now for instance i don't know if this is your question adam uh, 25185 but i think right now if i wouldn't study at all i think i should be able to beat mid stakes for most of this year right so if i stop studying now i think i should still be profitable in 200 dollars tournaments at the end of the year Yeah, I think that's a good estimate. Where can one go to improve their game but can't afford to raise your edge with decent coaching? Um, ask the right questions on Twitch to people. Like, ask open-minded uh, questions about strategy. Um, and then uh, what's also really good is uh, start with... Like, every single training school, like Raise Your Edge, right? If you look at if you google youtube uh ben cb raise your edge or something hey, let's let's try i mean no this is nice this is like normally we don't have time for this uh ben cb ben cb whoa okay okay raise your edge there it is okay raise your edge okay whoa three tips look at this oh okay three tips for, three tips for playing out of position in poker oh that's cool 
Uh, book a study with Ben CB using parrots. Oh, that's cool. What hands the three of a big one? How's it? Wait, let's check. Oh. Oh, he's going through studying himself. I can watch. Cool. So I don't have to pay for anything. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, cool. Uh, very cool. Um, what else? What else did I have? Oh, how to take notes? What? I'm playing poker. I don't know how to take notes. Oh. Oh, so that's how I take notes. Oh, that's cool. Oh, now I make notes. You see, free info. Like, I just YouTubed. I just fucking search him on YouTube and I find all these study tips and materials. So do that. Also, if you have trouble doing this, like pursuing knowledge like that in your own time, you will not make it in poker. Because at a certain point, you're going to have to do this with a lot more complicated stuff, right? So just be super proactive. Look for stuff. Uh, you hear the name Raise Your Edge, right? Oh, Raise Your Edge or BBZ or fucking Upswing or... You hear this name, oh, it sounds interesting. You look at the site, oh, this sounds nice, you know? But I can't afford it. So then you go YouTube, right? Is there any material that I can find? Is there any promotional material? Do they have uh, free courses? Because every single site has free material because they want to trigger you to want to get more of the knowledge. They want to showcase something, right? Like when when you gonna commission a, 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 a graphics artist, they have a portfolio and they show you the portfolio uh, a fucking actor has headshots because they want you to get interested in what they see. So training sites provide you with information so that you get triggered to get it. So, you know, it's you can find anywhere. Sure, like the eavesdropping you and your coaches. Yeah, I mean, but it might not be as valuable to other people because, I mean, it would probably because we're going over a spot, but not as valuable as it is to me, I guess. Maybe a, a tournament review with a coach. Yeah. I have to do those, but like I had, I had this whole plan. I had this whole plan. Um, it's so hard to plan extra shit. So, um, but uh, the easiest thing to plan in all that is poker content. So a tournament review with a coach to just go through the whole tournament and talk about it. Definitely, uh, definitely on the the horizon uh, to happen because I really want to get like an eight hour session with Ben C B in. Well, there are a couple of good things for new players to study in general sense. Uh, the structural stuff, um, what hands to open, uh, how to play short stack, right? I mean, people don't understand uh, short stack. Oh, push fold, push fold charts. It's like, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, push fold charts. I don't know how to play. Uh, I don't know how to play short stack. Uh, let me see. I'm not used to reading this chart. So, oh, cool. Okay, so mm, nine big blinds. Nine big blinds. That's very cool. Nine big blinds from the cutoff. What do I shove? Oh, deuces, any ace, uh, any suited king, king eight offsuit or higher, queen six suited, queen ten. Okay, so you try to remember, like, you try to just remember, like, uh, any ace, any suited king, any pair, and then, like, uh, jack ten offsuit or like ten nine offsuit plus. It's super strange to just put jack. So, that this chart sucks because it's. If you say 10-9 offsuit, 10-9 offsuit should tell you enough that Jack-10 offsuit is a shove. So this chart sucks, right? Like if 8-6 suited is a shove, then fucking 9-7 suited is a shove and 10-7 suited is a shove. So you just think, okay, um, normally in a good chart, this would say like uh, Ace-X, um, uh, King-X uh, King, uh, King suited, King-8 offsuit plus, 10-9 um, offsuit plus, because if it's 10-9 offsuit, you know queen-10 offsuit is in there, right? 10-9 offsuit plus, and then uh, for suited connectors, for one gappers, 8-6 plus and 6-5 plus. That's how a normal chart would look like. And then you think, okay, cool. And then you study these and you try to kind of like uh, make it so that you understand different positions. And then it's also good to get curious, right? It's like, oh, but this is nine big blinds. That's cool. But, you know, what does 12 big blinds look like? Okay, so we st okay, so with not any suited king anymore. Now it's king five, because that's twelve big blinds. So we need to watch out a bit with our king kickers, right? Here two goes up three pips here, two pips here, king eight off to here, uh, ten nine off to jack ten off. So everything okay. So we just have to make those two big, those four big blinds. We have to make everything like three steps better. Cool. Six five suited still in there. Eight six. So that makes you think 
okay what 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 teaches you that oh suited one gappers have a lot of equity because four big blinds doesn't make a fucking difference in the shoving charts cool so i can still wager my stack for 12 big blinds with a6 suited hmm that's interesting does that also go for one gappers when you have 14 big blinds let's say you're under the gun plus two how strong is that whoa jack nine 14 big blinds in there queen nine suited i had no idea then you start applying that you know that's how you study and get curious and try to apply different stuff at different things but these are the charts that i would study because you're going to be short a lot in tournaments and this is the most easy to find shit that is going to make you the most money because you don't have to think anymore a lot of frustration and a lot of like unpreparedness comes from being in a situation and thinking what do i do here do we just shove i don't know i don't think this is a good time fold uh, I have 13 big blinds, I'm in position, jack 9 suited, all in, because I know I have to. In a normal tournament, not in a bounty builder, right? Because that's different. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. Hmm. So, oh, cool. Um, wow. Okay, next. You know, it's just like, oh, I have, oh, cool. Uh, yeah, ace 5 offsuit, small blind, 15 big blinds. Okay, I'm all in. You know, you have all these standards in your head, and you can, it frees up brain space to think about the actual hard stuff. Also, Trust me, a lot of anger when you bust tournaments comes from actually not knowing what to do. And even pros have this. When I get super angry at a certain situation, I think at least 20-30% can be doubt about it. So if you take away doubt, you get more calm because you know you did the right thing, right? If you go all in with Jack9 suited and somebody has aces, this is when you guys go into Twitch chat and say, guys, Lex, I had 13 big blinds with Jack9 suited. He had aces. Could I have just limped? Could I have min raised? And then if he shoved, folded? You're trying to think ways out of the situation. Whereas if you looked up a situation and you know this is the right move, you would not question yourself after, which helps in the process. But yeah, go to short stack ranges. One of the best things you can do. Would you think you could be even crushing at the... Could be even more crushing at the tables if you stream less? 100%. 100%. It would free up so much energy, stress, time. Streaming is insanely tough. Wearing. It just wears on you. How does your coach approach situations at you? Uh, I'm sure they just constantly try to estimate, like... I would assume that if the West knows my weak points, he's going to use them against me. Fair game, right? It's up to it's up to me. Like, I'm, I'm willingly hiring a coach that I play against, right? So... Um, I would almost respect him less for it if he didn't. So, uh, yeah, my coaches are going to try and abuse my weak spots, which is probably good for me because <laughs> if they see it's still a weak spot and I'm making mistakes, then they're going to bring it up in the coaching. As long as they do that, it's fair game, right? Would you consider making your own training program for players that are a few levels below where you are now? Uh, no, because one, I wouldn't have the time to dive deep into preparation. And two... I think I'm doing really well as a student and as a player, and I think I could coach people really well, but not I couldn't coach them well in the nitty gritty by pulling up every program that I have and being super familiar with them all. I don't I don't use Pio myself ever. I study based on Pio and Equilab and whatever the fuck like anything. I study based on it, but my coaches do the groundwork, so that's that makes me save a lot of time which is what I need for streaming, right? I like studying poker and just love the game, but would like to get better. I just end up failing to implement the new things I learn. I'm forgetting about different thing from before. Write down key points. Here, I'll show you. These are quick notes, for instance, that, that are very useful for me. So this is something that I put in quick notes. Defend more button versus cutoff, even 20 big blinds deep. It should be especially big blinds deep. Three bets slash flat more from a small blind with suited connectors. If it's very deep or very short, 5-4 suited, 5-6 suited, become a full more often. This goes for multi-way. You see, this is already what I forgot. I've been flatting some suited connectors. Multi-way. Okay. Defend a big blind with any offsuit king, queen, jack versus 20 big blind min raises. This was a thing that came up too much as a mistake. So these things I read before I start playing. Don't shove too much deuces through sixes, 15 to 20 big belief. Late position versus early position. Pick more suited broadways. Completely fixed. I could take this out because this is completely fixed in my game. Careful with the offsuit medium ASX calls for 14, 20 big blinds and bounty builders. I was calling like 17 big blind shoves in the big blind with A7 off against bounties. Thought it was great. It's terrible. The more strength opponent shows, the more he can fast play. If 654 with two flush draw with a sorry, 654 with a flush draw, and we bet with pocket sixes, and our opponent raises the flop big three way, we can just fast play it to avoid um, bad runouts. 
um, where we're not gonna make all the money we can against, for instance, a lower set or something like that, or an overpair. Uh, stabbing flops and limb pots, small my first big blind. Make sure my random bluffs. What's the? Oh, that's about. That's gonna be about the vector flush draws, I think. Make sure my random bluffs. Queen, king ten on queen ten ten three. Ah, yeah. Block back to flush rocks makes him way more likely to fold, which is what that should say. So you see those do that. Put down the important stuff for you. Read it before you play. If you play cash games and you take a break in the middle of the day, read them again and continue. Would you say watching different pro videos will conflict what you're learning? I.e. they believe you should play a certain way. No. Um, everybody studies very much the same kind of programs and stuff. So um it doesn't matter it's uh it's very important that they package it in a way that you like or that you like the person and shit uh so tom brady the goat asked his family to leave him alone for a week before the super bowl so he could prepare where do you think the hours are needed on a weekly basis to study to not be the best but to be successful over the next years um what do you mean exactly like where do you find the hours or how many hours do you need like how, how much do you need I honestly think if you do something like a study course like Raise Your Edge and then you spend two hours a week studying, you're going to see insane results already. If that's what you meant. How do you feel playing live tournaments now with all the coaching you got? I mean, same as online, I would just have an insane confidence boost. I also think that I'm relatively good live because uh, I like the social angle into poker as well. The percentage on top is very helpful too yeah because like there's ranger programs right like uh you can you can practice that like if somebody says like what would be a what would be a 20 percent range um okay my stars is closed yeah what would be a 20 percent range okay so oh yeah so that's that um okay let's clear so this um this 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 um so um let's say this would be 20 percent okay yeah 18.3 so you can practice that right so what do we probably need to add? Like something like this, and I write like 20%. And then it's like, oh, okay, what if I shove 33%? What if, what, or what if I have to play 33%? What are really good hands to add? This is all shit, right? So maybe some ace, uh, one ace five off, probably these kings, you make this queen eight, eight seven, add this. Oh, cool, now we're at 25%. So this is just how you can... Uh... So what's like a small blind shoving range? Uh small blind shoving range for for let's say 70 percent or something right oh cool so that's this that's this and then that's and these and that's let's add this every ace and then you're like oh cool we're only a 50 percent now that's insane you know why that is look and this now you think why is it 60 percent i only have this but for every combo of queen six off or for every suited combo of uh, queen for suited there is uh uh four combos of queen for offsuit so every suited combo has four uh combos and every uh offsuit has 16 or total if you include them so 12 so that's why this number bleep just goes up with one percent so it goes up with 0.9%, and if you take this one away, it's only 0.3%. So that's because there's 12 suited, uh, 12 offsuit hands and four suited hands. So you can just practice with ranges like this, right? And you're like, oh, uh, under the gun opening range. Wow. Okay. Hmm. What did what does it say? Uh, what is my sh what is my shoving range from under the gun? 14 and a half, 14 for 12 big blinds. So okay. Uh, what about this? Um, 14 percent. Oh, but do they play really well? Probably want to take out Ace Deuce because I get called by Ace X hands a lot, so that they, they they lose some value, you know. So you could go a little bit with this, and then uh, you can shove this and probably that one. Um, 
most pairs. Let's say this or in bounty builders, you want to take these out. But let's say you add them. Where am I at right now? 11. Okay, so what else? These, of course, these are very strong. Uh, King 10 suited, probably good. Oh, 13. Okay, so I'm getting really close, you know. King Queen off is a good shoving hand. And then, you know. There you go. Oh, cool. So this is uh, this is what it looks like. And then you can check. You can just, like, practice this. Uh, oh, 14%. Okay, force plus. I added threes. Okay. Ace eight, ace five. I did well. You see, this is really good. Recognizing that you take ace six out. Really good, right? So I'm like, okay. Okay, so I took that out. Um, ace five. Okay, so I added ace four, but it's okay. It's the same kind of thing. Ace ten off. Wow, clear. Uh, king nine off, so king queen off was correct here. Uh, king nine suited, so king, uh, king nine suited I could bring in, but I'm one pip off, which is fine. And I, you know, so I had to add this, uh, or remove the threes, add that. Cool, jack nine suited, ten nine suited, queen ten suited. Ah, missed it. Missed it. So shove these more. Shove these more. That's cool, yeah, but then I'm at 15%. Yeah, but if you take the ace four off, you're at 14. Okay. Cool, so be careful with those lower suited aces. A6 and A7 I need to take out. I was shoving those. So that's how you kind of, you know, go back and forth. I mean, it sounds tedious, but it's also kind of fun, isn't it? <laughs> Doesn't it look like a video game in a way? I don't know. Thanks for all the great content. What do you think of Snapshot instead of the charts? Good too, because it trains you. It's a little bit limited, I think. Like, I don't know. Like some stuff just seems a bit oversimplified, but it's good. It's good to just try out like 100 hands, like do your shover fold, right? It's an iPhone app. What's your biggest tip to making this information fitting, let's say, into not so good math brain? Try to simplify information. But in the end, like for instance, I'm not so good at math. I'm not that good at math, but I'm good at application and I can still apply all the strategy really well. But to like sit down with a program and fine tune everything and calculate and see, like, like I'm good at logical thinking and application so you don't necessarily have to have math skills to do it about math class and rage edge would you say it's good to repeat and watch all the content five times and never stop or would it be better to find new content uh i think it's good to revisit topics where you're unsure about but yeah it's good because you can't you can't remember all that thing at once so it's really good to just keep doing it uh, quakey it like honestly the rage edge like master class should keep you quiet or keep you entertained for like two years uh as in every field there are many experts who suck at teaching have you had this experience with any of your coaching uh luckily i didn't because i went off um people uh people's recommendations one of the only people that i went in blind with coaching is the west and that just worked out fantastically so uh, i didn't have but yeah there's always bad um what you can do with coaches is you can say like uh let's do 15 minutes if i like the 15 minutes then i'll buy like a bundle of three sessions or something that should be good enough right i mean it's hard because at the same time people aren't going to be like uh like they don't want to do 10 people 15 minutes how much is to study first couple years uh first that like that that, that all doesn't matter because when i when i started there were no programs there was nothing we would just kind of talk about concepts about hands I'm shocked to see people are surprised about you spending 40k in coaching. If you're doing exactly what your coaches are doing, you'll get exactly what they're getting. Just investing to get that information. True. True, true. But like purely from a money perspective, if I wasn't streaming, it'd be probably good to spend extra hours myself. And then I would have needed less coaching. Then I could have brought it down to like 20k or something. But also it'd be less time efficient. When you start to push full 20 big blinds. Uh, I would say the only time you shove 20 big blinds is small blind to big blinds i used to just shove 20 big blinds mid position with like pocket force but it's just an oversimplification it's terrible you need to start mainly min raising uh above 15 or let's say 17 bigs might be worth mentioning like the certain programs break focus tos while playing but can be used once episode down yeah 100 percent like you're not allowed to use rangers like this like that i show in the bottom left and sites have protection so sides work together with because uh, otherwise you can just do it like this right wait you heck oh this is also cool yeah you can put like only diamonds and you can do colors for instance right very cool 
all this kind of stuff but sides have protection with the uh, focus stars yeah but most like most programs will be auto detected by the focus software which is great is it better to make your own shelf range or take the ranges as they're stated take the ranges that are stated because people spend dozens of hours calculating it what's the best program to record my sessions i want to start recording my session go over hands later find leaks uh yeah i would just get what crooks is saying use poker tracker four holder manager three tracks your hands and you can review very fast instead of going through a video best way to find leaks without coaching uh watch other people play see if they do something different than you keep your open minds where do you find these charts google you can find it anywhere yeah it's funny the chat says it too but it's really like where can you find these charts the only thing you have to do and this i'm not i'm not flaming you but i'm also kind of like making a critical note in how much you're doing yourself it's so easy to just ask but you have to learn to just look google push full charts click around on sites see if you can get them see which one looks best organized or, or nicest or something right like fucking do it 